Now, I bet you didn't know that number 16 has some pretty interesting mating facts. Starting with number one. The majority of caliper species in the world have 16 legs. Creepy, but cool. Number two. Old maps used to use something called compass rows to tell the orientation of that map. And back then, those had 16 points. Alright. And number three. Within something called the Briars Migs classification system, there are 16 different personality types. And this system is a test you can do yourself to see the personality type in regards to how you make decisions, how you view the world, and a range of other factors. But the 16 that we're here to talk about is iOS 16. And yes, it is just as interesting. But before we get things started, I gotta do one more thing. Cut the music. Good. Now let's get to the video. Hey guys, what's up? So, the first public beta of iOS 16 has been released and I wanted to share with you some of the features I thought you'd be likely to take advantage of the most. I've been using it since it was announced last month and today we're going to go over and cover what I feel are the best features of iOS 16. And stick around to the end of the video so you can see how we're going to install the public beta. So we're going to kick things off with the weather app. Now many of you may be asking yourself what is so interesting and special about this app and trust me, we're going to get to all those in just a sec. But before I do, we got to take things back to iOS 15 when Apple went through a lot of work to not only increase the way that this app looks and enhance those things, but the amount of information that you get overall. I mean, you can see here that the weather animations are probably the best thing about this app. I love when I'm scrolling through different locations because these animations are a lot more realistic and they show a lot more detail. So as the forecast changes throughout the day, so does the animation. If it's windy, you're going to see wind. If it's cloudy, you're going to see clouds. And I love the rain animation. I can't wait for you guys to see that if you haven't already. It's really awesome. These day forecasts here are pretty cool. So a new feature in iOS 16 is that you can now tap on any specific day and scrub through to see the hour by hour forecast of that day. You weren't be able to do that before, but this is really awesome. And we got to talk about the map. So when I'm scrolling down to the middle of the weather app, there is this map. And if you tap on that, you get to see a larger view of anywhere. And this is cool. So right now I've got it set to the default of precipitation. So I know where all the storms and stuff are at. You can play and pause that animation to see where the rain is going. You can also move the map around, pinch and zoom in and out to see more detail. But this cool thing here, when you tap on that, you get drop downs for precipitation, temperature, and air quality. So tapping on the temperature, you can again, you can see where it's hot, where it's cold at. You can tap on this again to change it to the air quality. And what I really like about the air quality is the amount of detail and just the fact that Apple decided to put this in. Maybe if you're one of those people that like to go for walks or do a lot of outdoor activities, this air quality map is especially important so you can see how clean or dirty the air is depending on where you are. And you can also force search on any location to see the current forecast for that specific spot, which isn't too accurate depending on the view of your map, so I highly recommend that you zoom in first. But yeah, that's the weather app, and it's got a lot of great enhancements. But taking things a step further, wouldn't it be good if you can just look at your phone and see what the weather is outside without actually having to open up the weather app itself? Apple didn't answer to that, and that is in their new wallpapers. So the wallpaper experience has been redesigned from the ground up. They started with a lock screen and this is arguably the most important aspect of your phone given how much info it presents. And in iOS 16, you can change those wallpapers right from the lock screen by holding down on it. Now these are more than just your standard pictures. There's an emoji, where you can set your favorite emojis and customize the pattern. There's also an astronomy, with views of the Earth, the Moon, or Solar System. And those views change when you unlock your phone. And the one we just finished talking about, the weather. So, with this weather lock screen, you can see the current conditions right from the lock screen itself. And, just like the app, the lock screen updates in real time and animates briefly when you unlock it. So, you know what? This is actually kind of reminiscent of having, uh, what are those things called? Live wallpapers on an Android phone. But, this is iOS and we're going to give Apple a chance to shine. But what we are going to talk about next is how to customize those wallpapers. So once you find one that you like, you're going to look for this customized button at the bottom and tap on that. And then from here, you can change the widgets, you can change the clock, and the info bar. So to change the widget, you want to tap on this area here. As of right now, only stock widgets in the iOS are selectable, but there are more coming when the official release happens later on this year. 
To remove a widget, all you want to do is tap on the X. Depending on the product size, you can add up to four of those small widgets or two really large ones. We can also customize the clock. So with this clock, you can change what type of font style that you want. And by tapping on this globe icon here, we can choose the different language of that clock. And right now, they're up to three. And we're going to send it back to Arabic so I can know what it says. But we're going to look here at the bottom of the screen for this color wheel. Scrolling all the way to the right, there is a color selector. And you get this large spectrum of colors. Once you select a color that it you like, I'm going to go with this one there. Tap on the X and assess the color. You can also scrub through to change the saturation of that color. And the info bar is here at the top. So if you want to change that, all you have to do is tap on it and you get these options to change things like the current weather or set your calendar events. Now, just like this, there are widgets that are going to be added to the iOS 16 later on this year. Once we're done, we tap on done. It's going to ask you if you want to set this as a wallpaper pair for both your lock and your home screens. And if you're good to go, you're all set. Now, if you want to use the traditional method of doing this, you can still do that. All you have to do is go down to your settings, find wallpapers, and from here, you can customize either the lock screen or the home screen. And customizing it here is the same process that we just followed before. Oh, and one more thing. I put some of the wallpapers used in this video on my website and they're free for download. If you're interested, the fastest way is to get there is pull down from your home screen and search. Just type in theseriousmia.com, you'll be taken to my redesigned website, check out the blog posts and the wallpaper set, and feel free to take as many as you wish. Be sure to leave a comment below on which one's your favorite, and I hope you guys enjoy. And speaking of the search in iOS 16, there are enhancements to how we use that. Starting with how you access the search feature. As we just saw, if you want to search for something, you simply pull it down from your home screen and there it is. But in iOS 16, that's changed. They added a virtual button that you could tap on to activate the search. And this button is a nice touch as it makes the experience more fluid. And it's little changes like this that can make a huge impact on how we use our phones. Other improved search related features include how it presents data relevant to what's going on or what you're doing. For example, let's say I'm listening to something on Apple Music. The search is on device Intel will recognize that artist. And by tapping on this link here, right there, you can see info related to that artist. Now, this is really dope if you're a music buff, since it basically shows you that artist's wiki. You can see all types of things from their social links, their music catalog, photos, videos, recent news. I mean, this is perfect if you're inspiring a paparazzi. And we use the search for other things like checking up on all the weather. Yeah, yeah, I know. What? Listen, check me out. So let's say you're traveling and you want to know what the weather forecast is like in Tampa, Florida. Rather than open up in the weather app, I can simply type weather in Tampa and boom, there's the forecast for the current conditions and I know what to bring. Now, while I'm down there, let's also say that I need pictures of dogs. I can use this as an example by typing in pictures of dogs. And there you are. It not only searches the web, but it searches my phone for dog related pictures and presents them. I mean, this is pretty amazing. You can even do math equations. So let's say if I'm too easy to open up the calculator and I just type in a simple equation and the search will do it for me. Now, what if you're too lazy to type something in? You can use your phone for that as well. All I have to do is tap in here, open up the scan text, and it's gonna use my camera. This way, I can scan the object or paper, whatever it is that has the words, and I can use the camera to scan those words and bring it into my search. That's pretty awesome. I mean, the search is such an underrated yet very powerful tool that I had to talk about it because this next feature nearly broke the internet when it was announced. And honestly, to me, when it comes between which OS is better, iOS or Android, this is the one that iPhone users can say they had at first. We can now edit and or delete sent iMessages, but there are a couple of caveats. Number one, you have to be in a supporting software to do it. And number two, you got a 15 minute time limit for you to edit or undo your message. So let's get into how it's done. After sending a message, what you want to do is force touch on that message to make a certain menu appear. So we'll wait for that to be delivered and then force touch. There we go. All right. So tapping now on edit, you can change the message to whatever it is that you want. Once you've been done, you're going to tap on the blue check mark to apply those changes. So I'm going to ask who's down for some hot dogs, tap on the blue check, and there it goes. It's going to apply the changes. You can see that it applied the changes because it has edited underneath it. 
Now, if I wanted to delete it, bring back up at that menu again, and this time hit undo send. Now be careful, because once you do undo send, that message is gone forever. It's not gonna ask if you want to undo the send, it's just gonna remove it, and then it's gone for good. You can't bring it back. And to make typing a lot more better, iOS 16 allows something called haptic feedback when we're using the keyboard. So turn this on, what we're gonna do is go down to settings, and then look for sounds and haptics, and then we're gonna look for the keyboard feedback. Now once we go into here, you wanna turn on both the sound and the haptics which is something that I personally like to use because once I have these on, not only does the phone make a sound when I'm tapping, it vibrates a little bit as I'm typing as well. So the realistic experience is there. This is something that Android users have had for years, so I'm really glad that Apple decided to bring this over to iOS. Oh, and you wanted to know how to install the public beta. All right, so this is simple. What I'm gonna do is head over to beta.apple.com and it will pull down and use the search in order to do that. All right, so beta.apple.com. Now, once we are there, we're gonna have to sign in with our Apple ID. So we got two options. You can go either go to sign in or sign up. I'm already signed up, so I'm gonna sign in. And then once you do this, it's gonna use your Apple ID password or face ID to log in. Do that by tapping on continue. There it goes. And you're gonna be taken to the screen that gives you the information that you'll need to know, the important stuff about the public beta and how to use it. Make sure you read all of that and do a backup in case you haven't already. You want to enroll your device, it's going to show you how to do that backup. And then once you're ready, install the profile by tapping on download profile right here. You can do that. It's going to show you that the profile has been downloaded once you click allow. And then from there, you're good to go. Go to your settings, go to the updates, and then find where you can install the software. And I hope you guys enjoy it. Be sure to give your comments and thoughts on what you think of the public beta, and be sure to subscribe and follow me on these social media platforms for more adult tech videos. Until next time, stay safe and thanks for watching. Peace.